um, Gandhi, when we talk of Gandhi, remember, we, I personally can't think of him without thinking of his wife, Kustupa. It's not a complete definition, description of Gandhi if you don't mention his wife. Not because I am a feminist and I would say there is always a great woman behind the success of a man. Because there is also a man behind the success of a woman. A father, a husband, a son, a brother, or the society. So I'm not putting it like that, but it is also talking of that era. When people got married at the age of 14, even now they are doing, but that was the rule then. And Gandhi and Kastuba, both 14 years old, got married. And uh, I wonder sometimes, what did Kastuba think at that time? Because as it is a girl in Indian society, when she gets married, she changes her entire context. Not just with the man she lives with, because she adopts a new family. She adopts the new customs, even today. <coughs> it is the food, the language, the society, everything sort of changes. But for her, it was a double change, ten times more. That she was marrying a boy who was to spend his entire life um, experimenting with what he called, which he wanted to know, I mean, which is the truth. His experiments with truth. I mean, what did she think? I mean, did she realize it? The amazing thing is that every time she argued with Gandhi along her long life, uh, married life, uh, she was arguing with Gandhi. And she did not accept any uh, instruction of Gandhi, any advice or guidance of Gandhi, or any decision of Gandhi without <coughs> arguing it first and then accepting it, and yet um, not doing what she did not like. It is a kind of courage of a woman. I would not say just an Indian woman but of a woman who can adapt herself so much. She was illiterate. Till the last, I don't think she knew too much how to write, but she was educated. And here the difference between literacy and education. I mean, we have to give the tool of literacy to Indian women. We don't need to say it is education. Education is different. We can get big degrees, sorry, here is a person without any degree, but you can get many degrees. But still, education is something different. And she was, represents also the educated, the sanskar, nature's also. At 14 years old, she gets married. Both of them grow up together. And of course, he goes to London, comes back. Every day, there's a challenge. Today, I want to do this. Tomorrow, I want to do this. I will go to South Africa. I will go to London. I have to do this. I have to do that. And she's following him. And the strain, and the Yet, if you ask me at the end, who was a greater human being between Gandhi and Kasturba, I would say Gandhi. Because I think for a man to come to that spiritual height is more difficult than it is for him. She is not greater than Gandhi just because I think it was more natural for her as a woman. And it was more difficult for Gandhi. It was not difficult for Kasturba. She just argued it and understood. And she went ahead. So Gandhi got the message of Matri Shakti, the mother power, which he found in Kasturba, which he said that he learned the message of non-violence. He saw Matri Shakti in his mother, in the woman called the uh, uh, Ramba, Ramba Ben of Korbanda. And she saw how this uh, lady who was considered outcast at that time, how he gave the message, how she gave the message of the name Ram to Gandhi. And whenever Gandhi was afraid of fear, afraid of darkness, she would say, take the name of Ram. So he <coughs> says that he got the message of, he hasn't said it, but sort of, it, I, I have come to understand it this way, the three people, women, who influenced him in his life, his mother, Kasturba, and Ram. Kasturba throughout, and Gandhi was a householder who was experimenting spiritual, on a spiritual uh, journey in life, on his mental um, work, on his <coughs> constructive work, on his work against injustice of the country, in a, inside the country and outside the country, and of a foreign rule. He experimented. I asked somebody, what is so great about Gandhi? Some years ago, I asked Professor Ramchandra Gandhi, a great philosopher. I asked him, 
what is so great about why is Gandhi considered so great? What was the greatest about him that he spoke of truth and violence? So Professor Ramchandra Gandhi said that he had read all the religious faiths, the great philosophies, and all of them talk of uh, compassion, truth, and love. But nobody takes all these messages and applies all the rules to the dailiness of your life. It is not something for speeches, it is not something for public work, it is not something for constructive work, 9 to 5 or 9 to 9 or 9 to 12, or <coughs> morning 6 to 12 at night. But it is the 24 hour in every aspect, in your letter writing, in your speech, in your behavior, in the end also in the food you eat, how you hold your cup, how you look at a person, how you walk, how you deal with every problem. And that is why, because of the dailiness, his uh, application of the rules of great philosophies in the dailiness of his life made him in such a way that the United Nations was supposed to make it into a day of non violence the second of October. And he practiced it in a way, in the end, his attire. He could have dressed like a uh, sadhu, but he was a householder. For his spiritual journey, he didn't go to the Himalayas. He, was, he remained a householder with four sons and he was very close to his family also. Like, um, of course he became father of the nation because, because he was attached to everyone, everybody was attached to him. And nobody also knows about his family, which is a very good thing. But I would remember to answer your question that he was a very close family man. <coughs> Of course, he was as close to others as he was to his family members, but there were certain things, he was so close to his family people, his grandchildren, various grandchildren, because he had four sons. And the dis difference between the eldest and the youngest was enormous. So that my eldest Kaka's children were my father's age. You know, as it happens in many Indian families. And he used to write to each one. I was very lucky being the eldest daughter of the youngest son that I got to know Gandhi in the first 14 years of my life were spent witnessing Gandhi's last 14 years and Kasturba's years and also the whole transition of India till 14 years. How Delhi changed, how the scene of Delhi changed in Barak Circus when we used to have clear sky. Now it is all polluted sky. When we used to have from the Barak Circus flag, we could see Tonga's going and now we have it is so full of traffic, we can't even walk there. It was a transition when Nehru would come to our house, when we stayed in the Harijan Ashram near in the north of Delhi, or in Kronos Circus. Whenever Pandit Nehru came, our house doors were all open. There was no fear in that person. Anyone could come and take my father to jail, or my maternal grandfather to jail, or my uncles to jail. But there was no fear. The doors were open. The sky was without any um, pollution. And we could read all about stars from the rooftops in Barak Circus. Now it is all to you. I learned all about, you know, the stars and all that from the rooftop. And now our grandchildren, when they go to an open space, they went to the north of Gujarat and they saw open space and they said, my goodness, what is this shining in the sky? Because they see the pollution of Delhi. So the change in Delhi, climatically, pollution and fear. I remember growing up in a period where there was no fear. Anyone could enter the house, the doors were open. Now, after so many decades of independence of India, we are now encountering fear, a global phenomenon. In the West, there is fear. Here, there is fear. <clears throat> As we become more affluent, somebody is doing better, or we are not doing enough, what will happen to my children? Fear of loneliness is also affecting us as it is affecting the West. The richer we get, the more powerful we get, we are afraid of loneliness, of illness. So this is the great difference. I have witnessed India at that time and now. And there are few people living today, uh, I would say really, very few people, and that's why I feel um, a sense of responsibility towards all young people. That I spent the last four months of his life also um, in the so-called Brilla House there. Now it is Gandhi speaking where Gandhi was assassinated on 30th January. He spent the last four months of his life there. I remember the time in um, 
Valmiki Ashram, whenever he used to come there, when I was in a student in St. Thomas' school, Nehru would come, uh, Jinnah would come, Mount Batten would come, and Bapuji's room was always open. Doors were open. People would just enter. There was no question of knocking. And today we have security guards all over. They are the most known people. The unnamed, anonymous security guard is the most well-known person to do in the country. And his survival depends on my fear. As long as I'm fearful, he has his bread and butter. So this is the changing scene. But Bapuji's uh, fearlessness <coughs> was unique. All big, these um, people, you know, these uh, terrorists are all fearless people. But their fearless will, uh, fearlessness gives me fear. When I look at them, they, I get fear. But Gandhi's fearlessness inspired love. The fearlessness that an enemy can come to you and say, I don't like you, Gandhi. I don't like you, Bapuji. And Bapuji would talk to him and turn him into a friend. Not compromising, turning him into a friend. And I still remember people like Kaidya Azam Jinnah coming, and so many people coming to him, talking to him, and getting up and leaving him as a friend. That was his fearlessness. Anyone could say anything. Yet he never wasted any single time of correcting people around him, especially his grandchildren. And I was the last victim of his life. And uh, there was, before independence, when he was staying in the Valmiki Ashram, near my school, a Protestant school, and um, Steph 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 Stafford Cripps was to come there uh, to negotiate for independence. Uh, uh, so I don't know so much history, but you would know why he came and all that. So he came, and Babuji was going for the prayer meeting on the stage, and there was a huge crowd around, around him. And Babuji would look at time, he was very punctual, not late as I was today. Um, and he was getting late for the community prayer, which he never missed in his last seconds of his life. Uh, he was, Sir Stafford came coming, there was a huge crowd around him. And, but Bapuji introduced me. As I said, he was a close, he was a very good grandfather. I was next to him, he said, meet my uh, granddaughter, the daughter of my youngest son. I was, when he died, I was 14, but that time I was 13. But first time I was shaking hands with a white man. And I was so happy about it. And I wanted to try out my English. He said, how do you do? I was so happy about that question so that I could practice my English. And for his, how do you do? I said, oh, uh, I had fever yesterday. I fell ill. My mother, <laughs> my mother gave me an aspirin. And today, I think I will not go to the school. But tomorrow, maybe I will go to the school. But the after, Babuji just said. He took me aside while he was getting late for the prayer. Here said Stafford Cripps negotiating for the freedom of India. Um, Kaidyas are making his terms. Mountbatten coming and talking in a different tone. I don't know, but I think I took away something from the time. He came to me on the side and he said, Tara, Hindi, Angrezi mein jab how do you do kehte hain, to sirf how do you do kaho, apne swaste ke baare mein mar baat ka. <laughs> don't talk of your health in English when people say how do you do. Just answer with how do you do. They don't want to know of your health. <laughs> I was very upset. And I said, I told my mother, I was crying, I said, I don't want to do anything with this language of this culture. I was surprised for two, embarrassed because I made such a huge uh, failure, embarrassing situation. Sorry, figure. And also, I was surprised at Bapuji. He's all, he always spoke of health. You look at his letter, letters in the collected works of Gandhi. He's talking to Lala Rajpatra. He's talking to uh, Rajaji. He's talking to Rajinder Prasad. Every letter first starts with the health. And a long chapter, long paragraph <coughs> only on what they should eat, what they should not eat, how much they should walk, how much they should rest, how much silence they should keep. And here he's telling me I should not talk of health. <laughs> so I was quite shocked at that. Then, of course, there are many stories about that. My school was next to it, a Protestant school where the principal was supposed to be anti -gun. A British person, a fragile woman, and I wanted to join that school. My father first thought of it. My mother said, we are sending you to a national, nationalist school, modern school. Why do you want to go to St. Thomas's? The principal, Ms. Javud, is anti -gun. She is pro churchy I said, I don't care, because I didn't have sisters. I had only brothers. So I said, I will go there. They're all my friends going. OK, then I don't know. They were so wise. They said, OK, you go. 
I realized why they were wise. Because if I have learned the democracy of our country, I have learned it only in that Protestant school. Those were the days when cultures could have been different, but values were not different. Next to me was a girl who was the daughter of the commander-in-chief of the of, of the cook of the commander-in-chief. And on one side was the daughter of the driver of the commander-in-chief. There were burqa clad girls from Jama Masjid behind me. There were Brahmin girls in front. So all were together, and Ms. Jawood was yet anti-Gandhi. And suddenly a news comes, and there was a lot of uh, talk in the corridors of the school. They said, Arre, we have heard that uh, Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi is coming and staying next door to our school, which was then called Harijan Basti. I said, really? I hadn't even known about that Basti. So I said, really? As he comes, he said, yes, he came this morning. So I told Ms. Jaud, Ms. Jaud, can I go and see my grandfather? He, she said, yes, yes, you can go. So I took a bunch of girls, and the interval we went there to Babuji. Babuji I told Babuji, I said, I, my school is just next door. She, he said, I know, because your father has told me. So he was very close to his family. Then he said, please go and ask your principal, can I use your school compound, your lawn, to walk there in the evenings? Because all the leaders will come there, and while I take my evening walk there after the prayers, I would like to use the lawn of your school. I went to Ms. Jagut. Ms. Jagut, my grandfather wants to walk in your lawn, in the school lawn, after the prayer. Can you do it? He said, yes, you can do it. It's all right, let him do that, okay. I told Babuji, Babuji, Ms. Jagud Mahanbini, she has agreed, you can walk. <laughs> then that evening we went there, we were walking after the prayer, and Babuji said, can you call your principal? I want to thank her. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in, those were her personal hours, yet I went in, and I said, Ms. Jagud, um, my grandfather, I always said my grandfather, my grandfather wants to thank you, he wants to meet you. She said, all right, she came, she was a typical, English lady of a certain age, very fragile, very gentle person. She came and uh, he said, I want to thank you, Ms. Jagu, for allowing us to walk here. She said, it's all right, Mr. Gandhi. Thank you, you're welcome. That's all. And she went away. And she could not bear the thought of the negotiations of independence. She was deeply hurt. So what she did, she left the shores of India. Few days we heard she was leaving India. But while she was going, she was um, looking at the floor of the house, floor of the school, and she said to some of our girls, don't throw any waste paper, any litter on the floor. When you see it, just pick it up. <coughs> no, that, I didn't see any difference between her values and Gandhi's values. I mean, she was not talking in a Gandhian way. She was talking in the basic wisdom, basic uh, common sense. When you see litter, pick it up. Don't waste for the next day for someone to clean it. And Gandhi was a stickler for many things, for good handwriting. And once I wrote him a letter, postcard, just like that, you know, one felt very free. Babuji, mujhe aapki bahut yaad aari hai, baati yaad aari hai. Some words like that, which had no meaning. Babuji wrote back immediately from one prison, not our palace. And he said, um, wrote back, uh, I have to say this in Hindi, uh, Rosa, but then I'll translate it to you in English. He said, um, uh, Sara, tumhari chitti mili, kehna hoga ki chitti achhi nahi thi. <laughs> Tum behtar lik sakti ho, aur akshar sudhar ho. <laughs> and I was so angry I had torn up that letter. Otherwise, I don't know, somebody would have made some copies of it and sold it at auction. <laughs> This, and this man, who was a minimalist today, these things are being multiplied, copied, and being sold at auctions. He uh, experimented with minimalist things, you know, with the basic things. And his attire, when I said he was a spiritual search, but he chose not the dress of a sadhu. He chose the dress of a man in action of the fields of India, the farmer of the villages of India, rural India, half dhoti. And mind you, he wore the classical Indian dress, so he buy, which is unstitched, untailored cloth. What is our uh, classical fashion? We are talking about designs and fashion and all that. For male and female all over the country, we are not complete unless we have something or a whole dress made of untailored garments. Dhoti, lungi, shawl, turban. 
it is a cloth. We only need to have a shawl or something like that, or a turban. Without that, the Indian dress is not complete. For men or women all over India, maybe, and also because we give a style to the cloth we wear, which is not designed by the tailor. Our outfit, our uh, thing, dhoti wearing or turban wearing, is my personal creation. It is not organized by the tailor. I put an autograph on it, the way I wear my shawl or scarf. And many people have now seen, uh, tried, actually Attenborough, when he made the film, his greatest difficulty was in tying the dhoti the way Gandhi tied. It was not a zip-up, pull-up dhoti. It was the way he tied it. The way he tied original, the pagri of uh, uh, Katyavat, from very original thing. So Gandhi wore the classical, uncut cloth, but keeping in mind the minimum cloth of the, and also dressing up like a man of action, not a spiritual leader, which he was a spiritual seeker. He didn't call himself a spiritual attained person, but he was a seeker. He was also, he uh, brought the reason of truth as commodity for selling to the British, for buying independence. And for his cloth also, he said that per capita um, cloth, is only two and a half meters or three meters. Why should I wear anything more than that? So please don't compare me to Gandhi because if I buy cupboards full of khadi, does not become my mean I become like Gandhi. And that is, was also one reason. He experimented how much do people eat per capita in uh, food of intake per person, of cloth per person, of uh, possessions of a person. And then there was great adventure with him. He would all suddenly ask me, what is the new language you have learned today? What is the new word you have learned of any language? So I would try hard to think of something when I met him. What have you learned? Have you improved your tablet? He always praised my mother. And when I was going to South India once uh, for Kutralam, those uh, uh, falls to have a bath there, to my grand maternal grandfather's house, he said, you are very lucky. Uh, bathe in the waters of Kutralam, but also learn more Tamil. He, it was wonderful. It was great fun to be with Gandhi. Think of Gandhi as a person. It was great adventure to be there. His laughter, his sense of aesthetics. No one can today <coughs> capture his sense of revival. You see, anything done in the name of Gandhi, Sudhir Bhai, you can wear khadi, you can do anything, but you will never catch his revival. I have not so far seen anything in the so-called, uh, I should not say that, um, but in the Gandhian institutions. He never gave the name Gandhi to any institution. We have given Gandhi Sarvodaya, Gandhi Ashram, Gandhi this. He gave his name only to Kasturba Gandhi Trust, Kasturba's name. But we are calling many institutions by the name of Gandhi. I always feel that Gandhian institutions is a challenge to turn the country into a Gandhian ashram, not the four walls of there. And of course, Khadi is great because it's good for our climate. When the synthetics are invading our country, we have to save Khadi. But it doesn't mean that I become a better human being by just wearing Khadi. And I can call myself Gandhian. In any case, I don't like the word Gandhi. We are all lovers of Gandhi not Gandhi Bhati. There's something um, we have not understood his refinement. And also, uh, Rosa, it is coming from Indians, please accept it. Gandhi does not belong to India alone. He belongs to the entire humanity. He does not belong only to the poor in the huts, or to the rich in the palaces, or people driving the scooters, or people driving the rickshaws. He lives where there is my own food. I have no message to give to anyone. I am only taking a message from all of you. In the long years of my life, I feel everyone has a message to give. And when people come from outside India, why do they like India? Maybe they identify something with their own hearts and they like India. Or they like Gandhi because they identify something of their own truth. Today, Gandhi means uh, a flow of truth, compassion. Not truth without compassion is a hard word. So he combined it with nonviolence. 
Hadi for the economic reason and for also the reason of meditational power and also for dignity of labor and also a common factor between for uniting all the castes and the divisions of India and the languages. There is a, uh, there is a physical therapy, mental therapy in Spain. And today synthetics have invaded, which is a very unfortunate thing. If it was cotton, one could understand. You can't buy pure cotton anymore. It's very hard to find. People don't even know what cotton is. And what we are wearing is very harmful to the health. So I would suggest for Khadi, I've been trying very hard, that at least the military people, the armed forces, should have one Khadi towel with them. When they go, you know, they're given a ration. You have to use this, you have to use this. Something are made of... You know, government also should do it, we should also do it. And people are also always asking, what do you think of the government? Why should I think of the government and the politics? Because in democracy, it is the citizens who are answerable. Not the government, sorry. not the political parties. So I think with the challenge to young people, um, I would like to stop here, but wait for any questions or anything you would like to ask. I would like to ask you, yes. uh, as uh, his granddaughter, did you ever feel the pressure of uh, living by his morals and uh, his life, his ideas? Um, I don't know, I, because it was natural, you knew. For me, he was a grandfather. Mohandas Karamchandani and Kastri Baba was there. I knew how to uh, discipline myself before him or how, what he wanted as all children do before their parents and their grandparents or their relatives. But I didn't think of all this pressure. And now also, I really, in my mind, I don't think of myself as, you know, somebody who's carrying something. As I said, I'm taking a message from everyone, which is not connected always with Gandhi. I see so much goodness in so many people. Today, we had a very interesting afternoon with, um, with an Italian girl and her husband is Mexican. Rosa was there, my friend Anita was there, and I asked this young man, Mexican man, Juan Carlos, his name is <coughs> Juan Carlos, yes. And I said, well, he's just married, and I said, he's living in India. I said, what is it that you don't like about India? He was quiet, he didn't know. He said, I'm afraid because Indians don't take criticism well. <laughs> um, and I said, um, no, no, please go ahead, we will not mind it. So he said, I love India, but I don't know. There is so much injustice, and people are so careless. And I think this is our national uh, weakness, I think, is lack of care, carelessness. <coughs> Bad people are very few, good people are many. But we are on the whole in our behavior, in our lives, we are careless people. And the carelessness builds more carelessness and more carelessness, and then untruth, and then violence, and then in the end, terror. What you say in Hindi, we care for ourselves, we care for our family, we don't care all the things in terms of society. We pass by lots of things on the road. We don't stop back to stop a person from harming the trees or the animals. If we see a needy person, we don't trace back because we have an appointment to keep, we have something to do. I think we less in this country, probably. But he was agitated. He said, I'm saying all this because I love this country. So, you know, I, um, I take messages like that. That time I'm not conscious that I'm about this granddaughter. It is when all of you ask me questions like this, I feel I have to be prepared to be at, <laughs> to pass at your level. It's a challenge for me. Yes? <coughs> you are actively involved in the Kasturba Trust. Hmm. Uh, could you tell us something about their activities and to what extent uh, you have been able to penetrate the villages of India? Uh, a Kasturba Trust is a huge history. It was formed in memory of Kasturba. When Kasturba died in Agha Khan Palace. And it is, um, he, she died in Agha Khan Palace and somebody told Bapuji, I remember my father was also asking me through letters, uh, what is the best memorial for in the name of Kasturba? Somebody suggested Mandir, somebody suggested a statue, somebody suggested this or that. Gandhi said the best would be to reach out to the millions of uh, women and children of rural India, to the needy women and children of rural India. Because she was a typical rural woman 
illiterate, yet strong, yet educated. So let us do something for them. That would be the best chemistry for students. And 25 centers were opened uh, all over the country, central being uh, Madhya Pradesh, <coughs> Indore. And it is a pre-independence institution. In Gujarat, you have Koba, where we have the, in, near Gandhi Nagar, where we have the Kasturba uh, branch. And we have been able to reach out to different people, uh, to the villages. In Assam, it has different challenges with all the, with the, with the, uh, the terrorists and with violence. Urisa, they have to fight the nature. And in so many parts, they have to fight uh, the floods, the, the riots, the violence. So each center, each branch has its own challenges. But like the rest of the country, we also have lost our vision. We have to change our vision, and we need something new, <coughs> new young people. And I think money is not a problem. Getting dedicated persons is a problem. As somebody was saying today, Gandhi's time, the person came first and the money was searched for later. Today we search for money first and then people. So there is a shortage of dedicated people. The visions are also changing. The problems are changing. The rural India is also changing. Rural area is becoming more the slummy fringes of the city. So our visions are changing. In fact, from Ahmedabad, I'm going to Indore for our meeting. We have many uh, challenges, but we were given some kind of award uh, by the government three years ago. It's uh, not because of the award. Um, I, I feel we have many uh, challenges there. We have huge areas. Like we have to look at the areas we have. We have to take in more people. And we have to, the so-called Ghanians uh, must realize that only Khadi wearing or calling themselves Gandhi Wadi does not they, these words don't make the Gandhian. I don't think Rosa is less Gandhian than any Gandhian, so-called Gandhian. And all of you. So we have challenges. We're talking of Kasturba in Arakha Palace where she died. I must tell you a story. Uh, we were born, brought up with the idea that, of course, my, with the youngest son and the family of Gandhi allowed his son to do, educate their children the way my father wanted. But we knew that whatever we possess, if somebody gives something, we should, Bapuji would say, don't take it, give it to the needy person. But we went to um, Agha Khan Palace, and there Bab was there, she was very ill. And Bapuji was sitting straight on the floor, spinning as he was always vegetating. And because Bab was not well, he was a little sad person, not? Of course, he didn't know what was going on in the country, how many people were in jail, whether Nehru was in jail or not, how many people dead. And here his wife was also dying. <coughs> Kasturba was very happy to see me and my brothers and my father and mother. She called me and she told Sushila and I, uh, Devdas ki tara ko mithai do. Give some sweets to uh, my son's daughter, granddaughter. Then he said, bring that sari. A beautiful sari, white sari with embroidered border. She said, I have kept it for my granddaughter, tara. So she gave me a sari. And I was so afraid to take it. I was happy to get my first sari from my grandmother, but I was afraid my grandfather would say, no, no, don't give her, give it to an needy person. So I, I took it and I wanted to run out of the hall. I took it and I was running away. Before that, Bhaktuji said, it is for you. <laughs> I was shocked. I said, really? And I, then I understood the meaning of needy person. I was in need of my grandmother's love. Needy is not just food. This is the main, but it is not just that. We are all needy of something. And that message I got from my grandfather. At the same time, I got a message from my grandmother. At the same time, I said, after so happy with the sari, I said, shall I go and play in a hall, which was as big as this? She was, they were in an angle, in a, in, in a little corner. So I said, which room? She was lying down. She said, which room? I said, that room, there's no guard there. I can go and play. She said, no. She said, guard or no guard? What is not allowed, you should not do. You know, I was amazed. She had the courage to give me a material thing, but she was telling me at the same time the rules, the ethical rules. She said, you don't need a guard to stop you from doing something that is not allowed. So, you know, these messages sort of stay on. At that time, I did not realize the weight of it, but today I do. Aran, uh, yeah. you said that you would like to travel a lot. I wanted to ask one thing, that among the Ghanaian <coughs> philosophies, 
can you uh, think of one thing which the rest of the world is adopting much better than uh, we are as Indians? The rest of the world is adopting. Um, you know, we are very close to many problems. So they come first. <coughs> and um, like the Indian philosophy, there are great seekers of Indian philosophy in the West. And when we think that we are uh, sort of spiritual leaders in the world, that's also not true because there's a great spiritual surge in the world. Um, there is a more open mind to Gandhi there. Because here we are struck also with the power play of Gandhi name. I don't mean Nehru Gandhi family. I mean my name also. If you say Gandhi, suddenly they think, oh, why didn't you join politics? Why didn't you do this? This is too much. If you want to open a shop on watches, wrist watches, you put a picture of Gandhi and show himself how Gandhi is buying this watch. Or if you want to do anything, you first railways, you put Gandhi's picture. And we do it with a different spirit because um, we own him. So I think there is a more fresh, there is more freshness in the outside world for Gandhi than we have yet. There is more freshness for Gandhi in the younger generation than in the older people. I would put the younger people on the same level as the Western world. Yeah. Because in the older people, if I talk of Gandhi, they feel they have a right to wear it. <coughs> Who am I? After all, he was the father of the nation. They will judge me and they will, they will say, no, they were better, uh, they know more about Gandhi. So everybody has a kind of position of Gandhi, which is not there in the outside. So I would only say there is a greater freshness there. Taravin, I'm curious to know of the uh, relationship that you have with Gujarat now, either through Kasturba Foundation or even even through your own heritage. Yes. Uh, there is this view that Gujarat abandoned Gandhi in the fact that it that it conceded to violence, uh -huh. and that is where it abandoned Gandhi. Yes. The many Gandhian institutions, notwithstanding. Yes. I, w I was curious to know whether you subscribe to that view, and also whether in your own work through Kasturba Foundation, whether you think that there is there are sentiments lying out there which we are not able to see based as we are in the city of Ahmedabad, but whether, you know, Gamrao Matamne Dekha whether you are able to see in the villages yes. or in ordinary people. So would you like to sort of comment on that relationship between Gujarat and Gandhi? Um, yes. I think what's there, in, uh, one thing you asked me about the Kasturba Trust, you're asking about Gandhi institutions. You're also saying about Gujarat. Um, there is, I think, in India, many times it has happened, we have not done enough prize chit or any... Um, prize chit, what is the English word? Penance? Penitence. 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 For our uh, sins. Look after independence, the rights that <coughs> I think we don't, it is out of something that we have become very fearful people. And I had come here during the riots and I could not stay in a Gandhi uh, institution also. Uh, if you ask about Gandhi institutions, there is a lot I can say which is against it. But I would say they were started with good intentions by great scholars, by great minds, <coughs> by great discipline. But it has not continued in that way. That is true. And the whole country is like that. In Gujarat, I love the colors of uh, the villages, the rural, as you say, the Kaunama. And I love the, mm, the language here. I like so many things. But I have, uh, I get so much warmth, so much um, joy out of seeing the colors and the culture here that I have, I have missed out on certain things, but on the whole, there is a violent energy going in the cities. More, more than elsewhere? Yeah. In Ahmedabad? In Gujarat, yeah. I can't come in for the whole of Gujarat because I've not been to all the cities recently. But in Ahmedabad, there is a kind of among the people around in the streets, there is a violent energy. I'm not saying they're not progressing or they're not nice. They have, I get so much hospitality here, so much love here. But that is there also in Gandhian institutions. 
I cannot say about Delhi, I'm living there. You know, as a person, I've felt this for some years in Gujarat, and I'm not relating it directly to, to the rights here. But the rights were also an eye-opener. In many ways, how a Parsi house gave me hospitality, and how in Koba we wanted to uh, uh, take many girls. And now people are, of course, saying that Gujarat is doing This is also another side, the organizational mind of the Gujarat. <coughs> how they are so well organized. My mother coming from the south of India, Tamil, married to Gujarati. She always said, Gujarat, I have learned the organization. In their household also. Uh, that is all to be admired. But the group, the collective energy, there is a bit of violence, I feel, in many parts of India. I am not saying less than anywhere. But I see it is the pollution, it is the violence of the mind. That results in the pollution of that. The violence of the mind and the pollution of the environment are the same. There is a kind of a violent energy which I will not be able to say no. I cannot say only in Ahmedabad. It is because I love this city, I have come here. With all the love and affection and I get and that I have for Ahmedabad. And so therefore I am coming again and again. So, I feel that, yes. And but during the riots, I must say, I had a very good message also. I was in a Parsi house, and I came out of my room, and there was a big angle, and a man was sitting and having his nashta, bhakri or something. I said, Tamaru Nam. He said, proudly, he said, Mu Mohan Das Bhai Chu Mochi. My surname is Mochi. He said it with such pride. He said, we don't believe in violence. <coughs> That was also a message. But Indians on the whole, now this is not Gujarat, that is not only my Gujarat, that is all over. Yes, there is violence in, uh, in Uttar Pradesh also. Yes, but there is a kind of, a um, lot of careless my, uh, violence. Here it is not so, it is, there is a careless violence also in you. But it is, um, and we are all in India becoming very judgmental towards each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm becoming now, but I'm not for each other. It's not right. But um, you can't, I would say on the whole, Indians, we have not done enough strategy for all our mistakes. So there would be results, like the Mayavatis. There would be. She is a result. She it has every reason to be what she is. We have made it like that. If centuries after centuries we have exploited a caste, of course they are going to rebel. It happens that those who are rebelling are actually bad leaders for their community. They are not good people. And they are rebelling against us who are not, who have done nothing. We are not responsible. Our forefathers, the generations ahead of us. So I think we have, Indians have not done enough penance. I have not done. Am I audible from here? No. Yes. Am I audible? First year. Yes, I'll ask you. After Harish. Okay. Uh, most of us, I would imagine, uh, have several disagreements with our parents and uh, with grandparents. We have yes. a generation gap. Uh, so I'm just curious, are there uh, aspects of your uh, grandfather's philosophy that you severely disagree with, or, or did you have complaints uh, with, uh, with him when, when you were doing that? You know, you are, for one thing, asking the wrong person. Because when it, I came to it, I said my first 14 years, me being the eldest daughter of the youngest son, had all the advantages of the man who was experimenting with his uh, ideas. Because others must have felt it before something. But I have never seen a human being, man, woman, or child, who has been uh, criticized and taking me to task for the wrong things, but all without any malice or meanness in him. There was nothing mean in them, ever. We always show some kind of meanness. But he never did. Look at our language. All beautiful languages of the world, of the world, when we have to say something, a curse, or a, abuse somebody, we use the, take the names of animals. 
they buy. It's not only these animals are meant for our food, meant for our pleasure, meant for our decoration, meant for beauty, meant for medicines. But whenever we have to degrade something, we degrade our language and use the name of a word, animal. Gandhi probably would have never done that. Um, I cannot say what I don't like about Gandhi because I did not see that. I can realize my father and my uncles and my mother and my aunts, they must have gone through some difficult time with him because he was experimenting and the worst person who suffered most was his eldest son. Even in our joint families, the person, if the father and mother are very generous to other relatives, the person who suffers is the eldest child. But me being the daughter, only daughter of the youngest son, with only brothers, so naturally I, you are asking the wrong question. I did not see anything. I did not, but I have many things against the other generations, yes. As I said, I learned, my learned, democracy I learned from Ms. Jawood, who was anti-Gandhi. And the search for Gandhi I learned more outside India than I have done in India. So I don't know. I, I, you're the wrong, I'm the wrong person. But I would... Post-independence, when um, India got divided, you would have witnessed the things happening, you know, the emotional turmoil and yes. things like that. Would you like to share some of the family? I mean, family of course gets affected, you know, when and being a part of this important family, you know, how did you kind of go through this phase? Yes, you know, it, there was independence of India. And we were all wondering in Delhi at that time, my father was running the Hindustan Times, and <coughs> we were living uh, with the machines roaring behind us in the flat, uh, behind, downstairs. And independence came, and we of course slept over the night. And when Bakuji was not in Delhi, and suddenly we heard riots. All the Muslim girls of the school, they were not to be seen. Somebody, they had run away, or they were not seen. And there used to be screams at night. And my father was also, uh, we half of the office, he would go and look after the people and come back late at night. I remember all that turmoil. And th many things happened. And then I remember my mother uh, coming to me and saying, I was a young girl, but she shared with me because I was a uh, mother shared with her daughter. She said, Bapuji is coming to Delhi, but I am very afraid. I said, why? She said, I am embarrassed to face my father in law. Because how do I face on behalf of Delhi? We have let him down. I remember my mother saying that. We have let him down. So I, I felt bad for my mother. I said, why? She said, no. I remember Bapuji coming. We are rushing to now the Birla house, Gandhi Smriti. And Bapuji, when he first saw me, he says, where is Lakshmi? Where is your mother? Three days he asked me, asked Lakshmi to come. And my mother went there uh, because I told her Bapuji wants to see you. You know, she had all tears rolling down her uh, eyes. And Bapuji just blessed her like that, you know, <coughs> sort of calm her. So those were the days. Those are very, very, I remember it were absolutely um, uh, very frightful days. And you suddenly, we could feel that, you know, what have we come <coughs> Also, the, the whole thing now makes a difference that Gandhi didn't want any power. And when Gandhi came, we suddenly heard he was coming. I think the last four months, he was going through very difficult mental uh, decisions because he had to start his new a new Kranti, a new revolution against the injustice of our own country, the within. The without was dealt with. The British and South Africa and all that. But India, what was happening? I think he was a man in torment, mental, mentally. And he could see the power struggle, he could see us, he could see everything. Um, in my generation, in the other generation, he was not happy with the way things were going. I don't think so. Not that I can vouch for it, quote from history, no. But I think he was my uh, vibrations, the vibrations I got in Gandhi's villa house for that. We used to go there as guests, you know, staying there. We used to go there from school straight and all that, and Bapuji, and then we used to sit. We had a temptation to eat in the Birla's kitchen. And I love the food there. And uh, Bapuji said, Tara, remember, you are guests here. You have a house. Only the youngest child can eat here. All of you should go back and eat in your house. <laughs> I was, I used to love the food there. Sometimes I used to run up to the residence of the Birlas. And then, of course, they would see me and they would say, please stay on for dinner or something. And I would eat there and then come down. <laughs> I used to do, do those things. 
But yes, those days were very hard. Yes. Uh, could you share your reminiscences of your maternal grandfather? I remember speaking to him at close quarters once in my college days, and he came across as a, a very loving elderly grandfather type. I had a very strict grandfather on yes. one side. Uh, what were your reminiscences of uh, so, well, You know, it is easy in a way to talk of Gandhi. <coughs> uh, even very difficult to talk of Gandhi. You know, mentally, if I would say that he was always well prepared for all the challenges that come to him. I've never seen a more refined man <coughs> than Rajat. There was something in him that when you entered and you approached him, it was the same atmosphere for me, whether Gandhi or uh, his grandfather or that grandfather, his grandfather had the same attitude to me. But there was a kind of fearlessness in Gandhi that inspired you to be like whatever you are. With Rajaji, <coughs> you had to be alert in your mind. He would immediately find out if there was any dullness anywhere. He was very shrewd, uh, as non-possessive as Gandhi. <coughs> as simple as Gandhi, he did not wear the farmer's dress, but he was wore the dhoti and the gamcha and angavastram and all that. But there was such a similarity between these two that when they touched something, I remember the touch of uh, both the grandfathers, when they touched even inanimate objects like furniture or glass or metal or door, they touched it as though they were, they were touching something with life. How do you compare them? Gandhi used to fast. Rajaji never fasted, but he ate disciplined life, food every day, the same quantity, this little quantity. He was thin like Gandhi. Gandhi had to experiment with everything and he, then he was thin. But Rajaji was naturally what? Never fasted but ate this much. Gandhi possessed very little. Rajaji maybe possessed a little. Gandhi never had a library. Rajaji had two books always with him, two, three, four books. Gandhi kept his day of silence. Rajaji was many times silent without talking about it. Um, it was near both of them, it was like being in a temple. No, I don't want to, I want to hear from all of what you. What would you say about Anna Hazare's uh, past? Yes. Yeah. Anna Hazare's past, yes, a good question. Anna Hazare's past, when it started, it was a true moment. When he started it, when he was inspired, it was a true moment. It suddenly gave people the courage in a fearful world like ours to speak up. But the way it continued was not right according to me because I am going to go in by my perceptions. And I suddenly felt all these people around him who were shrieking for, you know, Anna why did they not continue this fast? Why did they not fast? <laughs> you know, they are, because the whole thing centers around fasting. And an old man has to fast. Youngsters cannot fast. Youngsters cannot fast, so why talk of it? <laughs> if you ask me, I'll never go and fast because I will, I will, eat, I will cheat. I'll cheat. I'll fast. I'll eat in this secretively. I will not be able to fast. So I, I don't know why. This is what I'm asking all these people around me who are shouting away and all that. You know, there's sometimes no credibility when people talk. You know, when you stay to the heart. The moment, it was a true moment when Anna started. Even he did not know that he would be able to do it. But it is a very good result of it. We all have got the courage now to speak up. Of course, the bills don't make a difference. There's a bill against dowry. There's a bill against so many things. We are not observing the bills. In democracy, citizens are powerful, not the government. So Anna Sazari gave that uh, powerful message, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, growing up with such legacies, right, on both sides, do you ever feel that that was a big challenge, not something that a simple, normal girl, girl or a lady would grow up with? Was that challenging? No, no, I, I think I've answered the question. Yeah. I don't think it is, I said, I want to hear from all of you. I want. I am identifying with all of you and I do that with friends. Really, the only investment I have is friendship. 
friendship as it is of the whenever I see a friendship in somebody, I, this is what I understand. I get a message from all of you. I, think it's a, I don't think it's why should it be challenging? I'm a very normal, ordinary person. I'm not taking it as a big challenge. I have not taken the challenge, so it's not challenging. <laughs> but, but I think the question that people are perhaps wanting to hear yes. is whether there, are ex there were expectations from the society, from the other family members, and say, oh my God, you are his granddaughter, you are his daughter. Yes. And how come you are not able to, you know, blah, 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 blah. From the family people. Either from the family, or, or the, the society, or yes. the classmates, yes. or the teachers. You are right. And was that putting you in an embarrassing moment? No, when it the... can put me in an embarrassing moment, as I said, again, if I take the challenge. I know I was telling Rosa and Ali today that if I do something, anything, even now if I late, look, I was late, if I do something wrong, you say Gandhi's granddaughter shouldn't have done this. It will naturally come. And if I do even this much good, you will say naturally she comes from this family, she will do that. <laughs> so I know that. This is a challenge. But of course there was few challenges like I love Khadi and I wear it for many reasons. Uh, but as growing up, for, to answer that question, I, and to answer Sibibai's your question, I did not like Khadi. But I was forced to wear Khadi. Of course, I have, uh, was born in a vegetarian family, so vegetarian is all right. I'm, I'm only a vegetarian, I'll remain that. But Khadi I never liked. Actually, my uh, friends are all wearing beautiful milk cloth and all that. Why am I not wearing? My mother said, if you have the courage, ask your grandfather. So I could never ask him. I asked my father, I said, I don't want to. I went to a friend's house, she made me wear some non khadi material, and my father said, who has asked you to wear this? I said, my friend. She said, no, people are jealous of you, that's why they don't want you to wear khadi. So I have these big things about khadi. Yes, I have something against all of them. They never told me why khadi is necessary. They never said, it is good for our climate, it is good. They could not explain like that, because they had taken it also in a very, in a routine. You have to be, I obey your parents. Out of bhakti, out of bhakti. Yeah. But I now am the biggest crusader for khadi because I like it. It is not for simplicity. I know I'm. A, it's for luxury I'm wearing. It's so expensive. But khadi is another subject. That's, that will take me more hours to talk about. So that is one thing I can say about khadi. About behavior, I'm conscious of it. That if I do something wrong, it, it hurts my conscience. But equally at the same time, others are judging me. They will also say, Gandhi's granddaughter, she did this. In all the institutions, they said, we expect, they expect something more, something better. Not brilliance, but at least on a human level, yes. Yes, that expectation is there. But when I make mistakes, I realize it. But it hurts my conscience much more than what others have said. So I'm able to take it better. Yes? How was your interaction with Indira Gandhi? I beg your pardon? How was your interaction with Indira Gandhi? My interaction with Indira Gandhi is a good question. I'm glad you asked me. Uh, uh, we are all, I think many people in this country would be admirers of Indira Gandhi and also lovers of Indira Gandhi. I remember one thing of Indira Gandhi, uh, that era. It is an era. Uh, I knew her from the time before I got married when I was after India's independence. Uh, she was not well and my father said we have to go to Teen Murti because we used to refer her as Hindu. He said the Hindu is not well, we have to go and see her. I remember my slippers were half broken, I was in a certain uniform or something, we went there. And as we were coming back, my father said, she is going to send a note of thanks by tomorrow. And there was a letter of thanks to my father a day after that. So I got, my first impression was her education. The other Gandhi era, no, the, that era was different because I used to send a little note um, Indira Ben, I want to have an appointment with you. Much later, that was not very far ago, I mean, just a month before she died also. <clears throat> I would in Delhi put it in a post box. Going in an auto rickshaw, putting it in a post box, and if within three days I would get an appointment. Times have changed from that time also. I don't know, I'm not talking about Indira Gandhi's political um, ambitions, her failures, her success, her strength, her weakness, no. I, these are certain messages of an era of education. And I will remember her for those. She was very generous in terms of her time, her affection. 
No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the value of writing a letter of thank you to somebody who has come to see you. And also giving an appointment, a letter that posted in the post box and she writes, uh, and she gives me an appointment. That uh, means that the bureaucracy around her was not that active in stopping people from approaching her. <laughs> so that was another state of politics. Taraman, I found it very interesting that you felt you learned democracy in this school from yes. Mrs. Sherwood that you mentioned. Were you referring to, as you did, to the sociology of the class when you said a cook's daughter and yes. so on? Yes. But were you also referring to the nature of English education as, as something that teaches you more more liberal values and democracy? Is that what you had in mind? And no, I didn't have that in mind because I have no way to compare it to other system of education, so I didn't know what to compare it with. I'm really comparing it to the fact that there was no difference between caste, religion, <coughs> or economic, in social the, levels there. The and the values I got were not to, you know, it was kept clean, and the church, uh, we used to read uh, Bible hymns, Testament, New Testament, uh, but all hymns. That democracy, I meant the, the entire thing, when we did not feel any uh, kind of, uh, we did not feel that we should not belong to the prayers, we should not uh, be part of the morning prayer sessions, we should not read the news together, no. I meant that kind of education it has left on and not meaning the English system of education. Um, I am only thinking of my failures <coughs> in arithmetic, in uh, not knowing certain things not doing certain classes. So don't ask me what was school days. It's very embarrassing for me to think of those days. <laughs> but I used to love, love the class and love the teachers. Do you agree with the government policies uh, uh, for uh, Khadi? Uh, like uh, all this debate and uh, the very Look, thing that Gandhi fought for the rights of uh, the weavers and spinners and uh, people like him who did the poorest of the poor. Yes. But you it's know, not really reaching out no, to them. No, it's not reaching out. And it's a huge subject. Khadi is a huge subject. You know the philosophy of Khadi behind it, the philosophy of Gandhi, the philosophy of Matri Shakti. All this, there is a non-duality, a duet in all this. And if you are talking about the last man of the country, we cannot, we have, the Vikas is not reality. <coughs> Development is not ruination. And we have to reach the last person without being unjust to the to others around. In the Khadi is the same thing. Uh, uh, government policies I don't know, but uh, I've written so many letters. They haven't. Um, I, Khadi has not uh, reached out the way it should reach. Hmm. And marketing is also wrong. You get non-Khadi stuff in the markets now in the Khadi shops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, all that is wrong. But don't get into that. That's a huge thing and. All the mics will run out of battery now. <laughs> Rosa, you want to say something? Yes, I, yes, please say something. I think to wind up. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my question is, uh, during the freedom movement, there were many things that was happening outside which Mahatma Gandhi had to face. Did he ever bring the frustration back home? I mean, like the non-cooperation movement when it suddenly got suspended because of the Chauri Chaura incident. Yeah. Well, I, was, I don't know the Chauri Chaura experience. I don't. I was too tiny or not born then. But uh, I, I can tell you that it was not bringing home. I mean, he used to go to meet Gandhi either in railway platforms or in the prisons or in the ashrams or always with crowds. So I, I used to sit with him in Delhi uh, when my father would come there and talk to Gandhi after 8. Papuji would sleep in the Valmiki Ashram on a uh, wooden cot. Right. And I would press his legs. And I remember the father and son talking not a word of politics. I don't he uh, remember that at all. He would ask, he would tell Bapuji, you know what my father, you spoke too much, it's bad for your throat, as it is bad for me now also. <laughs> it is bad for your throat, you should make your speeches short. <laughs> what, and uh, what time are you sleeping? Why are you writing so much? So these were the questions my father asked. And I always saw Bapuji and my father talking like father and son. I, of social work, yes. Of Rasnath Makari, of constructive work, yes. 
of Kasturba Trust or of leprosy work or other things of Hindi prachar, but not of politics, no. One question. Yes. Uh, what do you think about present ruling Congress party than the uh, Congress party ruled by the Nehru and the Gandhi? What do I think about? Uh, I'm just uh, want the to present. hear from present ruling uh, party Congress mm -hmm. and then the Congress party uh, ruling by the uh, ruled by the uh, uh, Nehru and the Gandhi. You know, I have given you examples of Indira Gandhi, a bit what I remember her for, and what I don't know and don't understand are different things. But. Uh, about Nehru also, I would say, that that time our doors of the house were open. I remember Nehru rushing to our house. When I got married, I remember my grandmother and grandfather Raja, he was in the house. And Nehru coming up the stairs to our flat and saying, Tara has got married. And Lakshmi, she, he told my mother, you have not invited me. He said, no, he was out of city. He said, Tara has got married. You didn't give me a chance to give her a present. So, I am talking of personal relationship as far as government functioning is concerned and all that. I am not a politician because I really sincerely feel in this country the problem is with the people, not with the government. With education, yes. If I had to leave a message, a senior citizen, of, a very, very senior citizen of the country, I would say to young people, please do not take advantage of the life, weaker life next to you. Whether it's a human being, an old man, a young man, or a child, or animal life, or nature, don't take advantage of weaker life next year. Uh, apart from what you just said, uh, you also talked about the indifference to the injustice in the society, the carelessness about the injustice in the society. So, apart from just the message uh, you said, you gave, uh, is there anything else uh, as a youth we can do other than changing oneself? No, changing other than changing or? oneself is uh, one changing oneself completes everything. But other than changing oneself, I would say that I am for not women's liberation but for man's liberation. <laughs> because the way we bring up our male child, we mothers, we are doing a mistake. When a boy is born, we tell him, you will have to do, you will have to live well. I've got a son, he can do mukhabni for you. He can do my creation. You have to earn more, you have to study hard, you have to earn more to look after us. Whereas a girl, if she doesn't study, is all right. If she studies very good, she, has, she becomes a manager. She only has to have the tool of literacy. She's always stronger than men. Why are we making men so weak? You see, all we have to leave a good memory for the boy child in this country, especially. Otherwise, he becomes a terrorist. He becomes, runs, from, runs away from the school. He becomes a terrorist or falls a victim to terrorism. We are so harsh in schools with the boys. Or with the child, let's say, boy child, girl child. Leave behind a good memory in the education system for children, for future. I think. Compassion in education to children and to the motives of studying for a boy child should not be to earn more to be towards material <coughs> by the parents and the guardians. And the girls should not tell the boys you are doing but we girls are doing better. Of course, women are better in the sense that God has made them stronger spiritually. So I am for men in this way. <laughs> in the interest of the women of the future. Thank <laughs> <laughs>